Safety is always top of mind, no matter where you live. One South City neighborhood is taking things into their own hands in an effort to deter crime. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay takes us to Dutchtown. We cannot wait for somebody to come rescue us. Inside the Neighborhood Innovation Center on Saturday morning in Dutchtown, a group of residents and business owners came together for one purpose. We're focused on not only preventing crime or solving crime, but also looking at the root causes. Yeah, fuck that shit, right? Of the root causes? Ugh. They're not interested in solving crime. We're looking... We're, we're looking at how can we give free stuff to some people. That's when they say root causes, you're talking about giving some people free shit. A group of residents and business owners came together for one purpose. We're focused on not only preventing crime or solving crime, but also looking at the root causes of crime. For the second year in a row, the Dutchtown Community Improvement District hosted a safety summit. Crime is a society. Safety stuff in Dutchtown. Fucking Dutchtown isn't even uh, immune to this shit. God damn. I wonder if uh, this lady has ever had any crimes committed against her. Probably so, man. God damn. Dutchtown, though, man. Like, can, can, can I get a break from being in Dutchtown? Can I get a fucking break? The, the, the Dutch towners in the Dutch towners get a break. You know, the improvement district hosted a safety summit. Crime is a societal problem. It's an economic problem. It's a cultural problem. Chairperson Kaya Afiero says speakers from several different organizations were there to offer a comprehensive exploration into what safety means from personal to technological to community wide. We're not going to stop all crime. We need people to understand that there are things we can do. The Dutchtown Community Improvement District has been focused on cameras. As you can see, the flock camera behind me, those were implemented over the past few years, as well as they have expanded their curated camera network. Well, now they're adding a third peg to that, the Community Camera Partnership. That's a camera registry that will help us to help the police even more than what we are already doing. Organizers like Afiero are hopeful. All these tools together can help their neighborhood identify crimes faster and provide information to law enforcement quicker. I live here, I have business here. I'm affected by crime in our neighborhood just as everybody else is. But it's a problem that can't be solved on its own. It really takes all of us and being joined together as a community. In Dutchtown, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Damn, Dutchtown, man. Fuck. Can't even fucking. It's known as the symbol of St. Louis. This weekend, the Gateway Arch, the backdrop of a brazen crime. Thieves target a woman's college basketball team in town for a tournament. It was a very emotional day for us. Uh, obviously, none of our kids have been through that. I've never been through it. Good evening. I'm Prince Solomon. Right now, police are looking for whoever broke into a basketball team's travel bus. They were visiting from Indiana and stopped to pose for photos by the arch. Within minutes, their personal items were gone. Bob on your site, Zanny Crawl has the very latest. How often do you see basketball opponents wearing almost identical uniforms on the court? Well, when the visiting team has their jerseys stolen out of a van while taking a team picture at the arch, that's exactly what you're going to see. St. Louis is a, is a fun time. Like, it's a great city to be a part of. It just sucks that uh, bad things happen. 17 women's basketball players from Anderson University in Indiana were in town for the two-day basketball tournament hosted at Webster University. At around 2 p.m. on Friday, Anderson took these team photos at the arch. They stopped for no more than 30 minutes. Yet, one of them had been broken into and uh, a lot of our stuff was missing. A lot of game jerseys, backpacks uh, with laptops and iPads and iPods and all that kind of stuff were, was taken. The police report saying the driver door on one of the vans had been damaged during the break in between Gateway Arch Riverboats and the Arch. Multiple electronics, driver's licenses, a social security card and a number of basketball jerseys were stolen. Even their shoes were gone. So within a few hours, Webster University jumped into action, finding extra jerseys and kicks from their inventory to try and size the opposing players correctly. They play fast, they press, they shoot the three, they're well coached. Um, 
they're young, uh, they're scrappy. So uh, I kind of feel like the way they play is kind of how they handle this situation. They were resilient, um, and so it kind of shows how they play on the court, how they dealt with this off the court as well. When it comes to how some collegiate athletes may feel about playing in St. Louis in the future. I would say just kind of balance that out. And, you know, we, we work with that all the time with recruits, particularly out of state, that this, this is a very safe campus and St. Louis is a great city. Webster beat Anderson with a final score of 101 to 62. Reporting in Webster Groves, Annie Crawl, five on your side. Story you'll see only on five on your side. A rideshare driver is speaking out just days after he and one of his customers were held at gunpoint in Kirkwood. Five on your side, Brent Solomon is live at Kirkwood Police Headquarters with what he's learning. Brent? And 10 years as a driver, and the man who asked we not identify him says he's never had a scare like this before. He had just picked up one customer. He had arrived at the next customer's home, and then this happened. It was just before four in the morning, Wednesday, here on Hartman Court in Kirkwood. So all of a sudden, some headlights popped up behind me. A rideshare driver had just arrived at his next customer's home. I just heard bang, 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 somebody banging on my window. Another person pointing a gun at one of the customers in the car, both of them wearing masks. And the guy is telling me to get out the car, get out the car. That's when the other woman he went to pick up came out of her home. Her garage door opens. She doesn't know what's going on. She's just coming out to get in my car. The bad guys took off in the car they pulled up in. They don't want anybody witnessing the act because somebody may actually see the vehicle that he drove up in, and if they're smart enough, they may catch a plate. Personal safety expert Michael Barberi has seen this happen before. Recently, he's seeing it more often with rideshare drivers. Now, instead of robbing them, they're stealing their vehicle. They're not out joyriding. They're out looking for a quick shop or a gasoline station or something else to rob or an individual to rob. His advice, unless you're trained to put up a fight, don't. Why lose your life over a car? I mean, you can replace everything except your life. If that young lady wouldn't have opened up her garage door, there's no telling what would have happened. Fortunately, no one was hurt here. That driver a bit shaken up. He returned to work the next day. He told me he has to. He has to make a living. Police here now looking into the bad guy's car in connection with other crimes they've seen in the area. Live in Kirkwood.